Hey Valley Metal, welcome back to another math video. Tonight we're going to be learning about comparing rational numbers. But first, let's start off with a trivia question. Where or when did the military salute originate? All right, we'll get back to that. But first, our official target for the night is 4.9a. I can compare rational numbers. Let's do this thing. The Dudleys and the Crothers went for pizza. We ordered a giant 30-inch pizza. The Dudleys ate 18 30ths of the pizza. The Crothers ate 0.375 of the pizza. Who ate more? Hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you the shortcut. Convert it to decimals. Take your calculator over here. Convert 1830s to a decimal. You're going to get 0.6. Now you got 0.6 of what the Dudleys ate. You got what the Crothers ate. Choose the right symbol. 0.6 is greater than 0.5. Because remember, 0.6 is really 0.6, 0, 0, however many zeros you want to put on there. So, all right, let's take a look at uh, a couple of words that I think we're going to need to be familiar with today. Uh, rational numbers, these are integers or fractions that can be written as A over B. So you can get a ratio. Say what? Uh, that's kind of hard. I like this definition over here. A rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction or expressed as a fraction. All right, take a look up top here. This rational number, 1.5, they wrote this 3 over 2. There's a ratio, or 1 half would be another uh, rational number because we can write it as a ratio or fraction. Pi, which is 3.14159, blah, blah, blah. It goes on forever. You can't write a ratio because it doesn't terminate. It just keeps going on and on. It doesn't terminate or repeat. So it's an irrational number. All right. Uh, we also need to know what those irrational numbers are then. So there are numbers that you can't write as a fraction because they don't end. They just continually go on. They do not terminate. We also have to know about inequality symbols. We've got greater than, less than, and equal to. So what's the easiest way to compare these? Well, we've got a couple of options here. Here's the traditional approach when dealing with fractions you take and convert to a common denominator. So we have to compare 3 fifths and 2 thirds. Well, 3 fifths, if we use 15 as a common denominator, 3 fifths becomes 9 fifteenths. That's an equivalent fraction. 2 thirds becomes 10 fifteenths, which is an equivalent fraction. We know, of course, that 9 fifteenths is less than 10 fifteenths. Okay, that works fine. Um, you can always convert to fractions. I got to be honest with you. What did I say right off the bat? I think the rule of the day is to convert everything to a decimal. So here it is, my approach. Make everything a decimal. Step one, convert both numbers to a decimal. We got to compare 85.9% and 7 eighths. So let's convert them both to decimals. All right. So let's start off with this one here. Oh, I got to slide down just a little bit to get my stuff here. When we've got ourselves a percentage like that, get rid of the percentage sign, and we remember how we just take and move the decimal over, so we're going to get 0.859, now we just have to do that with 7 eighths, that's a fraction, so on our calculator we take 7 divided by 8, you get 0.875, so over here I've taken and written those two down, now you just have to decide which one's bigger, 0.859 or 0.875. Well, no, just messing with ya. 875 is larger than 859, so this is the correct answer. Congratulations, you just compared your first set of rational numbers by converting to a decimal. This is what I'm going to stress all night long. Here's another one. Compare 4 fifths and 0.789. Well, we're lucky here. This one's already a decimal, so we don't even have to convert that. So we just have to convert 4 fifths. So just grab your calculator, clear it out, 4 divided by 5, bam, 0.8. All right, so now you got 0.8 and 0.789. Which one's bigger? Pretty simple, right? You can do this. You can do this. All right, let's have you try one. Here we go. Compare 22 fortieths and 55%. Go ahead and pause the screen and give it a shot. All right, here we go. Let's see how you did. Well, 
If you took and converted 55%, you just move that decimal over, you got 0.55. If you take 22 and divide it by 40, you get 0.55. Ha! They are equal. Did you get that one right? All right, let's see what we got. I think I got two more examples. Uh, compare 85.9% and 7 eighths. We already did that one. Sorry about that. We've got one left. Compare 5 sixteenths and 3 fifteenths. Hmm. Pause this and give it a shot. Okay, I'm back. Let's see. Well, if you punch 5 sixteenths into the calculator, you're going to get 0.3125. And if you put this guy, which is a percent, if you move that decimal, you get 0 0.0315. I'm wondering if you remembered that you had to have that zero there and you have to, as a placeholder. So when you look at these, even though they might look close at first, it's very, very obvious that this one is much larger. 0 0.31 versus 0 0.03. All right, I think you're ready for the ticket to the show. Here we go. Uh, compare these two sets of rational numbers. We've got 54% and 4 out of 7. And you got 0 0.68 and 9 sixteenths. Okie dokie. All right. Question. Where or when did the military salute originate? Actually, it originated in medieval times when knights would have to raise their lids of their helmets like this in order to reveal their identity to their commanding officers. So they would raise it up like this. We'd salute down, but that's where it originated. All right, hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you know how to compare rational numbers now. One more lesson in this uh, very long chapter, uh, uh, unit, um, chapter four unit. All right, good night. See you tomorrow.